Hello, we are starting new series of videos that is time memory trade-off. Uh, in this series of video, um, Alice uh, will help us with uh, understanding some parts. Okay, let me remind you how to estimate the size of memory. Uh, we should uh, estimate the number of elements, uh, number of variables, and uh, if we have complex variables, we count number of elements in these complex variables, like arrays or lists or classes, and uh, count uh, total sum of uh, size of memories of each element. So we know the size of uh, for e variables of each type, for example, character is two bytes because it is Unicode. Byte is one byte. Integer uh, depends on the um, variable. It is like four bytes, eight bytes, and uh, some languages have uh, sixteen bytes uh, variables, and so on. At the same time, mm, languages like Python. Uh, or JavaScript or similar don't have the exactly, um, for example, for integer, they don't have um, restriction for size of integer, like it is in C++ or Java. And um, you can write numbers, uh, very long numbers there. In that case, in fact, uh, uh, in fact, um, the system store your numbers uh, uh, digit by digit, or not exactly the digit bar by, but maybe more compressive. But anyway, it is uh, stored like an array of integer. So each element of this array uh, stores some uh, digits of the integer, and so on. That's why. The size of uh, such uh, integers depends on length of numbers and can be computed like um, uh, can be computed by this length and counting how many bits you uh, need to um, uh, to store this sequence of uh, digits in binary way. And uh, by this way, you can estimate size of uh, the variable. It is not exact size because you also need some additional variables uh, for storing length, for storing some additional information. But anyway, it is way how to estimate the size of integers in such uh, languages. So for example, if we have um, an array of doubles, two dimensional array in uh, like this, in that case, we can compute size of such variable that is 1.6 gigabytes. And uh, you can understand uh, how many memory uh, uh, your program needs um, for, for the device. So, uh, in this series of videos, we um, we discuss sorting problem, and uh, this problem will be the main problem where we understand some ideas for trade-off between uh, time and memory. The this problem is the not the main goal for our videos. It is uh, it is so the main goal is not the finding different just different solution for this problem. But uh, this problem is ca considered as a very good model problem where we can uh, look to different properties of problem, different properties of data, and uh, suggest different approaches uh, for solving the problem. So um, let me introduce the problem. We have uh, array of integers. It can be list, uh, sequence, so on. Uh, of n integers, uh, and we should sort it. It means that uh, after 
our sorting um, algorithm, we should obtain an array with the following um, property. Each next element should be uh, should grade the previous element or be equal. Let us look to the simple version of this problem that is the following. We have an integer, but each integer uh, can be zero or one. Yeah, the, there is, you have such a restriction. You, uh, you know that there is no other values except zero and one, and you should sort them. Uh, in fact, it is uh, very useful I, uh, problem. You can meet it, for example, uh, if you have a list of uh, emails yeah, in your system, then it can be sorting uh, like uh, firstly you see um, the messages that you uh, you haven't read before and after that it, uh, the messages that you uh, already uh, open it so um, that's why uh, they have this uh, indicator zero or one that uh, you can use for sorting. So firstly with indicator zero, then indicator one. Okay, uh, we want to sort them. How to do it? Okay, in fact, we can use this uh, special property that all numbers can be all, only zero or one. That's why what we can do, we can just count number of zeros. Yeah, and also uh, count number of ones, but uh, uh, anyway, you can compute it like a n minus c0 after computing c0. And after that, we know how many zeros should be in this sequence. We write this number of zeros in the beginning of the sequence. It is like uh, C0 times we write zero. And after that, all others, um, all rest part of the array should be filled by one. So you get the exactly the same numbers. It is sorted. Uh, firstly, we have zeros, then we have ones. Let's look uh, to a little bit more complex problem where we can have numbers from 0 to 5. So it is also useful in practice. It is like uh, it uh, can be some categories. You can sort by these categories. But for example, you have, um, I don't know, uh, maybe it is t-shirts and uh, it is size can be uh, S, A, M, L, X, L, X, X, L, 3, X, L. So you have these categories and you can sort these items by this category, for example. And what can we do here? We can apply the same idea as for zeros and ones. We can count number of zeros, number of ones, number of twos and so on for five. And after that, write them. But such a code, not very, not very beautiful, it is uh, very big, and we can uh, write it shorter in shorter way. So uh, you can see that uh, if AI is zero, then uh, zero element increasing in array C. So we use array, not the variable zero one, uh, C zero, C one, C five, just for to have a sh short description uh, for variables. But at the same time, we can use it because uh, if AI is zero, then uh, we increase the met with this index. If AI is one, then we increase met with this index and so on. In fact, we increase the element with index that is AI. And we can use CAI for, for increasing elements. Uh, so after that, we just write uh, required number of zeros, required number of ones, required number of two, and so on. Uh, so 
uh, we increase the numbers that we consider. So uh, we consider all numbers from zero to five. And after that, we know, for example, i is zero. We should write zero, which means i, uh, c zero times. So c zero times we have this for uh, loop. C zero times we write i. Then c one times we write one. Then c two times we write two and so on. And we have um, index k as a common index for uh, this uh, result array. Uh, that we construct. So we can uh, discuss the common version of this problem if we have all numbers, all integer numbers from zero to some pi, p minus one and p is known uh, before. So we have such a restriction for our data. So then we can uh, use the same idea and we can use the array that is counters for each uh, possible value and the size of this counter is pp so um, then we have a four for all possible values from zero to p so uh, in fact uh, the this uh, firstly this algorithm called counting sort and secondly uh, in fact you can use uh, this idea not only for the case when the numbers from zero to p minus one but if you have some restrictions uh, p is a is the difference between maximal possible value and minimal possible value so for example, you know that all numbers that you have from billion to billion 10, yeah, there are only 11 possible values. In that case, you can use this sorting, uh, counting sort algorithm and P is 11 in that case. Uh, you don't need to have a billion 10 as a value of P. It is enough to have, um, uh, p, uh, p equals 11 and you put here i from billion to billion 10 plus one. Okay, you can use it uh, and p is in fact not the maximal value but difference between maximal value and minimal value. So let us estimate the size of memory. Uh, we can estimate it using uh, analyzing the size of variables. Here, the most big variable is the RAC, that is counter for each possible value. Um, okay, uh, for size p, uh, because it is int, it is four times p bytes, it is about 4,000 bytes. But uh, at the same time, typically we don't use uh, exactly number because also we should count the size of these variables, these variables, k, i, j, and so on. Uh, that's why we just uh, use uh, also synthetic size of memory that is mostly enough for us. It is all for of p bytes. And what about time complexity? Uh, we can count it. The first for loop, it is uh, first for loop uh, does n steps, and second, this for loop does p step, this for loop does uh, ci step. But the maximum number for ci is n, that's why we can say that it is p times n. Yeah, this p, this maximum, ma maximum n, this p times n, total p n. In fact, it is very root uh, estimation. We can do it better. So let us look to this cycle. Firstly, uh, on first step of the uh, outer cycle, the inner cycle, uh, the inner for loop, do C0 steps plus some constant that uh, is uh, increasing i, that is uh, assigning j0, checking this one. So it is some constant uh, number of operations. 
the second loop also takes uh, C1 plus some constant, the third loop and so on, uh, until the last loop takes C P minus one plus some the, about the same constant. So let's collect us the, these uh, summats and this T summats together. That is uh, the sum plus P times T. So the right P times is P times some constant. Yeah, okay. Uh, we know that is number of zeros, number of ones, number of two and so on, number of P minus one. Uh, at the same time, it is the total number of elements in our original array. So that's why it is n and here p times constant, that is n plus p. Uh, we can also uh, count the, uh, compute the time complexity in other way on each. Um, so we have at least p steps here for this for loop anyway, is it? Uh, zero number of steps in the inner loop or not. That's why it's here P. And also uh, for total number of steps, it has at least N steps because uh, we count these K plus plus on each assigning. And uh, the, we write, in fact, that the same number uh, of elements as it was in the original array and uh, uh, in the Last step k is n, that's why it is n, n plus p. So we can see that uh, more careful analyzing of time complexity give us better, uh, better result. And uh, the initial uh, root uh, analysis of time complexity uh, can be like uh, uh, bad time complexity. We can think that we find a good solution, but uh, we think, oh, it is bad time complexity. We don't uh, implement it. But in fact, better, uh, more careful analyzing give us uh, correct uh, complexity. And it uh, shows that this is a really good uh, solution. So the, in fact, it is totally n plus p. Because n plus n plus p, it is just two n plus p. And two is constant, that is n plus p. So finally, we have complexity, memory complexity O of p, and uh, time complexity is n plus p. This solution is very good if p is small for sorting some arrays, maybe a large arrays uh, with a small possible uh, range of uh, values but uh, if in that case if p is very small then uh, we have linear time complexity but what if uh, p is very large i mean for example p is just 10 to the 18 uh, in that case we have very huge memory complexity that is a billion of gigabytes and uh, very huge uh, time complexity. Even if we have just two numbers of length 18 that you can compare and sort yourself by hands in a few seconds, but uh, this um, algorithm uh, works uh, very slow. So that's why we can use it only if uh, P is small, uh, small comparing to what we will discuss it later when we discuss uh, um, another uh, solutions for this problem. But anyway, uh, if P is small comparing to N, then we can use it. So also it is uh, especially very, uh, very important issue if we use sort strings or sort uh, um, some complex objects like classes that can uh, have a lot of different values. In that case, this P can be very huge. Yeah, that's why uh, in that case, we cannot use counting sort. So we have the first solution for our uh, problem uh, with such um, properties. And next, we will discuss another solutions 
that give us maybe better time complexity, maybe better memory complexity, and we will uh, consider where we pay for time with memory, and maybe sometimes we pay with uh, uh, time for memory. Okay, let us discuss it in the next video.